transfer function. So our uh, chapter is the transfer function. And the objective, we will define the concept for the transfer function. We'll define the concept for transfer function. We'll identify the characteristic polynomial and characteristic equation of the transfer function. And we use the transfer function approach to finding the response in uh, dynamic system. What is a transfer function? What is it? Transfer function. It's simply the Laplace transform, Laplace transform of the output over the input when all the initial conditions are zero. This is, we call it initial conditions are zero. We call it a la, the sphere function, methylene G of S. A relationship between the output and the input when all the initial conditions are zero. This is, we call it the transfer function. So we have input, we have output to the system. We define the transfer function as the output over the input, like here. So the transfer function is defined as the Laplace transform of the output over Laplace transform of the input when all the initial conditions are zero. Suppose your system is like this. Suppose you have a system defined by the input is x of s. This is the input. The output is y of s. So Laplace transform of the output over the input is known as the transfer function g of s. As simple as that, in a very simple word. So to characterize the output over the input in S domain, we just, we just give the relationship uh, that is relating them in uh, S domain. So usually uh, this is what we are doing here. We take Laplace transform of the output over Laplace transform of the input when all the initial conditions are zero, and we take the ratio. The ratio is defined as the transfer function. Suppose we have uh, transfer, the output is given by y of s, a polynomial in s. The input is a polynomial in s also. So the ratio of the output over the input is defined as the transfer function. We call Shabab x of s, x of s the denominator, denominator. is called the characteristic polynomial. Characteristic polynomial is known as the denominator. If we take this denominator is equal to zero, we call it the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. So because it is equated to zero. So that's why it is characteristic equation. So basically this is what we are going to cover today. We will see some uh, problems and we will solve them. Through co some comments about the transfer function, the transfer function of a system is a mathematical model of that system, and it is an operational method, which means it is in S domain, that express the differential equation relating the output to the input. This is, this is the transfer function. The transfer function is a property of the system, which is unrelated. It has no relation to the magnitude or the nature of the input. The transfer function includes the units necessary to the relate the input to the output. However, it does not provide any information concerning the physical structure of the system. The transfer function is a system, uh, is the system known of the output response that can be studied for various forms of the input. The transfer function of the system, if the transfer function of the system is unknown, it may be established experimentally to introduce some known input and studying the effect. So we will see this, this kelam or we, we will see this through some examples. If we uh, look to the system here, we have mass spring damper system. The system is damped 
and it is forced. It has a force F of T. The free body diagram is shown here. And if we write a Newton's second law for a system that is in translation, we will write sigma force, summation of all forces acting on the system is equal to mass times acceleration. If we sum up the forces that are acting on our system, and if you pull your system a little bit down, the spring by its nature tries to go to the opposite direction. So Kx will be in this direction, which is negative direction. That's why we are putting minus Kx. And then similarly for the damper, minus Bx dot, and then plus F of T, which is in the same direction of the uh, motion. So plus Ft is equal to mx double dot. So now if we take if we uh, rearrange this equation, it can be written in this form. And if we take Laplace transform of both sides of this equation, provided we have zero initial conditions, we can say ms squared plus bs plus k, x of s is equal to f of s. This is the uh, Laplace transform of this equation. Now we have x of s is Laplace transform of x of t, and f of s is Laplace transform of f of t. Now, if we take the output over the input, we will have uh, x of s over f of s from here. If you take the ratio of x of s over f of s, you will get a output over the input or g of s, which is equal to 1 over m s squared plus b s plus k. You can see that the denominator is giving you the mass. You know that from the denominator, this is called the characteristic polynomial, m s squared plus b s plus k. This is known as characteristic polynomial. You know from this, we call it characteristically, and it characterizes your system. It shows you that you have a mass, you have a damper, and you have a spring. From here, you can identify the elements introduced in your system. If you solve this equation, m s squared plus b s plus k is equal to zero, it means this is called now characteristic equation, characteristic equation. So we can write it, we can write it in this form. This is one of the forms we can write it. And we call this ratio, we call it G of S. So from here we can say X of S, which which cross multiply X of S will be simply F of S times G of S. So which means if you have if you have, if, if you know G of S, if you have F of S, you will be able to calculate G of S. Where G of S here is equal to one over MS square plus BS plus K. So we have three quantities, the input F of S, the output X of S, and the transfer function that relates the output to the input called the transfer function. In general, we have three related quantities. We have x of s, the output, we have f of s, the input, and we have g of s. If we know two, two of these quantities, we will be able to know the third quantities. Usually, we give you f of s and g of s, and we look for f of uh, x of s or the output. Usually, we are looking for x of s, what will be x of s for a given f of s and g of s. So the impulse response, you know, for the impulse response function, we, we take the ratio x of s over y of s. And we can write in, a, if you want, if you can, if you have x of s as the input and y of s as the output, so the output and to the input can be written in this form from here to here. And, you know, if you have your input as delta, as delta, uh, delta is the impulse, x of s equal to delta, x of s is equal to Laplace transform of delta t. You know Laplace transform of delta t is simply equal to 1, so we can take this one 1. So y of s will be g of s times 1. So times 1, and this one is Laplace transform of the impulse, unit impulse delta t. Laplace transform of delta t will be equal to 1. We are substituting by 1 here. So we can say y of t, the inverse Laplace transform, is simply equal to the inverse Laplace transform of g of s, which is called g of t, since Laplace transform of the input 
will be equal to one. Uh, this one we already completed. This one we already completed. We write we, we write this relationship in block diagram. Block diagram that means they relate the output to the input. Some small block diagrams we write them like this: a signal that is coming from the input going to the output. We call this one signals, and we relate the output C of S to the input R of S by this relation, or we can write it C of S is equal to R of S times G of S. So, uh, no, so the row are going this way in this direction, and this is called the forward, forward motion. If we take, for example, uh, 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 if we take like we are doing in Simulink, if we take backward like this a signal from here, we call it, this is a feedback feedback it's coming back so this one forward and this one a feedback this is called a moving point moving point so some point you know we are calling them this is a summing point you see sometimes we have a summing point or we have a signal that comes the signal is coming from this direction with a minus sign and signal which is coming in the uh, direction and the uh, summing point, this, this is called the summing point. It is just summing the two signals. So the resultant of these two signals will be A minus B. A positive minus B negative. This is called a summing point. A branch point is this one. I am taking, I'm taking a signal and then I'm taking it back. So this is called a branch point from which the signal goes concurrently to other block is called a branch point. So this one is called the branch point, you know, and this is a summing point exactly like this one. So if you want to calculate now E here, what is E of S? E of S will be simply R of S minus B of S. And C of S here, C of S is the output, will be equal to the transfer function, G of S times the summing point, the, uh, the A signal E of S. These are some uh, summing point. A branch point, for example, B of S here, now, B of S, this signal. If I take a branch point from here, this signal is C of S. As you can see, it is C of If I take a branch point from here and I multiply it by H of S, multiply it by H of S, so B of S will be simply C of S times H of S. These are some uh, summation points and the branch point that we, be, we will be using in Simulink and that we will be using also in chapter 10 where we will go to chapter 10. Now, Shabab, we have just a small system here. They are asking us to find the, uh, the uh, system here, uh, shown the, uh, the system in 454 uh, initially at rest and the displacement x is measured from the equilibrium position at t is equal to zero. A force f is applied, a force u is applied here uh, to the system. If u is the input to the system, if u is the input, so this is u input, and is, x is the output. Uh, obtain the transfer function x of s over u of s. Let me just uh, share uh, share another file with you where I showed you where I am showing the uh, the uh, when I am showing the uh, the free body diagram here. In this figure, there is no free body diagram; is not shown. But let me show you when where there is a free body diagram to make it easy for you. So basically, uh, this is this is our lecture today. We will look for the output over the input. Remember, uh, the initial conditions are zero. The well, input, you know, could be could be a force or could be a torque for translational system. So if we go to this exercise, we will we will bring the free body diagram here. Let 
I'm not sure why it's not showing. Let me just bring the free body diagram. If you give me just one minute, Shibab. Chapter four, save. And then let me share my file. Okay, let me just share one file here, Shabab. Share the file. No, not this one. Add the file here. Chapter four. So here we are asked to find the transfer function between the output and the input. The output is x of s and the input is u of s as you can see. We have a mass that is connected to a spring k1 and fixed on this side. And with the other side, we have a damper and then a spring k2. And then there is a junction in A, there is no mass in this junction, massless. Spring K3, and then the displacement or the force is applied here. Uh, let me just bring the file now where, where I included the free body diagram to make it easy for you. So this is the free body diagram here. If we look, we have the mast. And we, when we pull, the direction of the displacement is to the right, to the right here. Now, the spring, by each nature, try to uh, to be to have a force like this, minus k, 1x, as shown in the free body diagram. This bumper, or this damper, has two ends, this end and this end. So there is a relative motion between the two ends. If we assume that this is the motion here we have at this junction, we are calling it A, and we assume that we have a point, the motion hina is y. And we assume also the motion hina is z, for example. So in this way, we, the relative motion between the damper hina, it will be b, x minus z, or x minus x dot minus y dot. So the force exerted hina on the damper will be b, x dot minus y dot, as you can see. So this motion, this force, is because of the damper here, B, X dot minus Y dot. We have a spring K2 that has also the opposing force, K2, X minus Y. If we take the junction itself, in the junction, in junction itself, we will have the relative motion between this point and this point. So it will be B, X dot minus Y dot, and minus K2, Y minus X. When you are looking, Shabab, for the displacement x, the motion will be x minus y. When you are looking for the uh, motion at y at, at the junction a, it will be y minus x. So it will be opposite. So, or you can say this one will be the same force exerted here, but in the opposite direction. If you put this direction like this with the y, it will be b x dot minus y dot. Same. So it's the same force, but in the opposite direction. And I'm putting this vector on this side, but I'm writing minus b, y dot minus x dot. So here, also we have a force that is coming from this uh, end, and the spring k3 has a relative motion. So we will have minus k3, y, uh, yeah, we have minus k3, y minus z. So if we write now the equation of motion for the mass m, 
and we write the equation of motion for the junction A, it will turns out to be like this. So for mass m, for mass m, we will have minus k1x, the force that is coming from the first spring. The first spring is fixed on one side, so it will be minus k1x. This is the force. This is minus k1x here, which is here. Minus k1x. And then minus b, x dot minus y dot, which is this one, minus b, x dot minus y dot from this side and this side. Minus k2, x minus y, it's from this side and this side. Minus k2, x minus y is equal to mx double dot. If we take the junction A here, if we take the junction A, we will write sigma force is equal to zero. And we don't have any force, no force, no mass. Because there is no mass, we write uh, sigma f is equal to zero. So we will have minus b, y dot minus x dot. The relation because you know the motion is this minus b y dot minus x dot minus k2 y dot uh, y minus x and then minus k3 uh, y minus z which is the motion this y minus k3 y minus z is simply minus u here if you look at it it will be a force that is coming this way which is equal to minus u this is minus k3 y minus z so if we write the if we rearrange the equation the first equation will be in this form mx double dot plus bx dot plus k1 plus k2 x is equal to by dot plus k2 y the second equation if we rearrange it also we'll find it by dot plus k2 y is equal to bx dot plus k2 x plus y now if you look to these two equations they have this term is the same. So if this term is the same, we can equate this equation equal to this equation. If we equate this equation to this equation and we simplify this with this, we will have mx double dot, mx double dot, k2x will simplify with k2x here. So plus K1X will be equal to what Shabab will be equal to U. And now if we take Laplace MX double dot plus K1X is equal to U, the next slide will be simply this one, as you can see, MX double dot plus K1X is equal to U. And now if we take Laplace transform of both sides of this one, this will give you MS squared plus K1 X of S will be equal to U of S, will be equal to U of S. And if you take the ratio X of S over U of S, this will give you one over MS squared plus K1. So as if uh, these uh, two springs, we have no effects with the damper, the damper of the two springs will, will be uh, absorbed by the uh, damper by the effect of the damper and your system will be exactly the same as this one so the system the previous system is equivalent to this one the output is x of s and the input is uh, u of s another example here shabab we have a mass that is connected to a spring and then a damper and then the massless card, the massless card means it has no mass, but there is a motion U here. There is a motion here. If you draw the free body diagram for this system, we will have, here we will have the mass, mass, and then the motion is Y. And then we have, the, if it, the motion is Y like this, we have the spring force that is giving you K, X minus U, because there is a relative motion here now. And we have the damper force, which is on the opposite direction, sorry. This is the direction, not the direction. And we have the damper, which is B, Y dot minus U dot. Y dot minus U dot. So if we write Newton's second law for this mass, we will get the following. Now, 
This is the free body diagram, as you can see. So sigma force will be equal to m y double dot minus b y dot minus u dot minus k y minus u is equal to m y double dot. Or we can write it in this standard form. In this standard form, Shabab, I want you to pay attention to the following. We always, in this type of motion, we have the output in the left-hand side. Left-hand side contain the output. So the left-hand side contains the output, which is Y. And the right-hand side contains the input. The right-hand side, which is U. Yeah. U is the input. So simply now, we have the left-hand side contains the output. The right-hand side contains the input. For zero initial conditions, take Laplace transform of both sides. And we end up by having this equation, ms squared plus bs plus ky of s is the output, equal to bs plus k times u of s, the input. And we can write it like this. We can write it either in terms of ratio or in terms of the, for a given uh, input, if a given input, given the transfer function, what will be the output? So this is what we are writing it. We can write it either in this form or we can write it in this form. So u of s is the input, y of s is the output, and the transfer function will be bs plus k over ms plus bs plus k. For example, if we have an input of magnitude 1, which is a step, what will be the output? This is, it turns out to be simply a differential equation that you have solved before in a plus transform in chapter two. If we use Shabab, if we use uh, the uh, MATLAB, if we use MATLAB, this is what we will get. For mass is equal to 10, B is equal to 20, K is equal to 100 Newton per meter. The uh, response will look something like this. The unit step input is this. You give the parameters M, B, and K. You give the numerator B and K. Uh, you will give the numerator M, B, K. You will ask this will be transfer function denominator. You will get this one. This is your transfer function will be this. And then if you plot just step this, MATLAB will understand that you are asking for the step response. He will adjust the time uh, given for this transfer function and he will give you this response. The input here is the dotted line, which is one step input magnitude one. And the output response will be the blue line, which is this one. Very simple. You can solve this one just by using MATLAB, by using the uh, this previous uh, method in using Laplace transform. So y of s over u of s, when you plug the numbers, you will get this equation, 2s plus 10 over s squared plus 2s plus 10, given the input is u of s is equal to 1 over s. So you know y of s, y of s, y of s like this, y of s, will be u of s multiplied by the transfer function to s plus 10. So we are multiplying u of s by this one. Since, since y of s is simply 1 over s because it is the uh, step input, so we need to multiply this by this. And then you, you write the denominator 2s s squared plus 2s plus 10 to complete the square as s squared plus 2s plus 1 plus 9. And you can see that this one is a complete square. You can write it as beta s plus gamma over s plus 1 square plus 3 square. And this one as alpha over s. How to calculate alpha, beta, and gamma is just to multiply this one, beta s plus gamma by s squared. This will be s squared here. And then this one, alpha, multiplied by all this one, it will give you the denominator. You equate this numerator to this numerator, and you will get 10 alpha will be equal to 10 from here. 10 alpha will be equal to 10. I will raise maybe the... Oh, pen is very thick. I don't know how to control the thickness of the pen. If anybody can help us with this technology. So we have Hina Shabab 10 
alpha is equal to 10, we equate. So from here, alpha will be equal to 1. And we have 2, ga two alpha plus gamma, because this is a coefficient of s. This will be equal to 2 here. We'll get gamma is equal to 0. And alpha plus beta will be equal to 0, which is the term in s squared. So beta will be minus 1. And at the end of the day, we will find y of s is equal to 1 over s minus s over this one. So it turns out to be minus uh, s. I can I can add, since I have plus 1 here now, I can add plus 1 and subtract minus, minus 1. So it turns out to be this equation. We found this equation. 1 over s minus s plus 1 over this s plus 1 plus 3 cubed plus 1 over 3 times 3. This will give you, uh, when you take the inverse Laplace transform, this will give you 1, and this will give you a cosine term that is shifted with minus 1, minus exponential minus t, cosine 3t, and this one will give you 1 over 3, exponential minus 3t, uh, exponential minus t, sine 3t. This is how to find the response, given the transfer function. So, given transfer function will be simply a notion a notion that is uh, given uh, as to solve the differential equation. Another uh, system here, we have a junction in a junction point. We have a junction shabab here. We have, as you can see, Shabab, a junction a point A, and we would like to find the transfer function of the system. We proceed like we did for the previous case. We assume uh, the fictitious point or junction point, and I'm assuming that there is a mass here, you know? fictitious, tachyulia. We will imagine that there is a mass here, you know? I'm calling it M2, fictitious point, fictitious mass or mass tachyulia, I'm assuming. So if we look to the free body diagram, we take the mass m. This is the mass m. The motion is, the force is p of t, as you can see, the forcing term is p of t, and the motion is x of t. I assume that this junction here now has a motion y, and I draw the free body diagram. Here we, from the spring, this spring, since this end is fixed, so we will have opposing force from this spring K1, which is K1 times X. The spring K2, it has two uh, end. Uh, one end is X, the other one is Y. So there will be a relative motion between here. So there is um, uh, the force here now from this spring, which is uh, K2 Y minus X, or I can write it like this. I can write it K2, sorry, K2 x, it should be x minus y. It should be x minus y here. So, and then the force P of t, and then from the fictitious uh, point, from the fictitious point, the fictitious point is connected to, is connected to, uh, is connected to a damper here. So there will be a damper that is fixed from this side. The damper is fixed from this side here. So the force on the damper simply B to Y dot, B to Y dot. And the force on the spring here, I don't know why my, uh, my pen is behaving strange. There will be a force K2 of Y minus X from here. This, so we will write free body diagram for this and the free body diagram for this mass, or we write Newton's second law, and we try to find the transfer function. So if we take the mass M, the mass M, which is this one, Shabab, we have uh, minus K1X plus K2Y minus X. I am writing it plus K2Y minus X and then plus p of t, and these they are all the forces acting on this system. So we have uh, this one will be equal to m x double dot. Or we can rearrange it, we can write it m x double dot plus k1 plus k2 x minus k2 y is equal to p of t. You see here we have p of t as the input, 
X and Y are the output. So we have two outputs in I remember. If we go now, if we go to the junction A or mass M2 that is fictitious, that does not exist Aslan, we created just to write the equation of motion. So we can write sigma force is equal to zero because the mass is not there. Since there is no mass there, this is what we are assuming uh, equal to zero. So if we write now the forces acting on the system, we have minus B2Y dot plus K2Y plus K2Y minus KX or here from here, this will be equal to zero. We can rearrange them and this will be simply B2Y dot plus K2Y plus K2X. So our equations are equation A2 and equation A1. Now, Shabab, as you can see, we have one input that is P of T, but we have two output, X of S and Y of S. We write now, we write Laplace transform of both sides and see. If we write Laplace transform of equation E1 here, this will be ms square, as you can see, ms square, plus k1 plus k2 x of s minus k2 y of s is equal to p of s. This is Laplace transform of the first equation E1, provided we have zero initial conditions. For the second one, for the second one, I'm writing minus k2 s minus k2 x of s plus b2 s y b2 s y of s plus k2 y of s is equal to zero you look here now we have two equations with two unknowns two equations with two unknowns the unknowns are x of s and y of s x of s and y of s you know how to solve a system of equations when we have two uh, two unknowns a system of equations with two unknowns can be easily solved just by uh, taking either uh, one of the variable and substitute it into the other. Like, for example, y of s, you express it in terms of x of s here now, and then you substitute it back in the first equation, or you use Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule should be known from math zero, uh, zero, 001. If we take now y of s and substitute it in terms of x of s, and then back into the first equation, we get this relation. We get this relation, x of s and p of s, which means we get only the variable x of s and p of s. See now, the first transfer function is x of s over p of s, which is this one, b2s plus k2 over mbs cubed plus mks squared plus k1 plus k2 b2s plus k1 k2, which is, which is a third order polynomial. In a similar way, we can find J2, which gives you the transfer function between the output Y of S and input Y of S. Here, the output X of S over the input P of S. See the problem. The second transfer function is only K2 over the same denominator. The same denominator should appear in both transfer function, in J1 or in J2. Any questions, Shabra, before we move? Any question? Now, to solve for x of s, x of s will be simply uh, g1 times p of s. To solve for y of s, it will be simply j2 times p of s. So, if x of s will be j1 times p of s, and y will be j2 times p of s. For a given p of s, for a given uh, p of s, which is the input, if the input is, is given, the transfer function, you know it, you will be able to calculate the output y of s. So here you now what we are doing, we are giving the values for m, b2, uh, k1, k2, and x of t, what will be the our what will be the output for a step input of magnitude 10. So the input is a step input for magnitude 10, like this. This is the input from here to here is 10. This is the transfer function here. And we are looking for the output y of t and x of t, y of t and x of t. This is p of t here now, p of t. I don't know why this is appearing. My mouse is not uh, any working properly today. So 
if we write numerator is equal to k2, denominator is equal to, we define it, we define the denominator m times b2, m times k2, k1 times b2 plus k2 times b2, and then k1, k2. This is the denominator. The numerator is known. Numerator 2 for the second transfer function. Numerator 1 for the first transfer function. And the denominator is common. So the first transfer function will be this. The second transfer function will be this one. If you write this one, transfer function, numerator 1, denominator, you will get the first transfer function. If you write this 2, transfer function, numerator 2, denominator, you will get the second transfer function. And now we will just uh, substitute step 10 times this one. 10 times this one means the magnitude of the step is 10. And then with a red line, dotted line, 10 and then times C2 with the blue line, you have the two response, X of T and Y of T. Maybe you will put G, G text and grid. These are uh, all this. Uh, some question here, can you find the limit about this limit here? What will be the limit here? The limit will be something like here, which should be normally, it should be around 1.6. How we can find this limit just by using the final value theorem. You know the final value theorem, what it says? It says limit. Uh, Hina, I will write it like this limit of x of t when t goes to infinity, it's simply limit of s x of s when s goes to zero. You have x of s, x of s is defined by x of s, I will write it in a x of s is simply g of s times 10 over s. 10 over s is the input. So x of s will be g of s times the input u of s. This is x of s, you know. Multiply it by s, you will find the limit. It should be somewhere, you know, like 1.6. So to obtain the analytical solution, we, we also wrote it in analytical solution, and we will find this uh, solution here. You can multiply it, and then you will find the, uh, the analytical solution, which is x of t. The analytical solution turns to be, at the end of the day, like this one. When you uh, do it with MATLAB, we found the analytical solution to be uh, this term. Minus 1.36 cosine this, and then minus this multiplied by this one. All these terms goes to zero except this term here. This will be when uh, the limit of x of t goes to infinity, x of t goes to infinity. This term will go to this value, which is the steady state value. Any question, Shabab? Do you have any question? Do you have any question? So this is, we, we use in MATLAB this transfer function today, and then we use the numerator and denominator. Transfer function represent this. And then this is MATLAB program to calculate the transfer function also, TF, numerator and denominator. You have the numerator 2 and 25. The denominator is 1, 4, and 25 your transfer function will be directly this one. You can use it also in finding the response. This is the response. For a given step input, what will be the output here for a given transfer function also? We define, if you remember, the uh, mass, temper, K1, K2, numerator 1, numerator 2, and then the transfer function, we got this out. This is, of course, in a shabab when we have, I think, the impulse. The impulse, of course, will go to zero. The impulse goes to zero and you apply the force and you, you remove your hands. It's not like the step. The step, when it behaves as if you are applying a load, the step will go here, will go to a certain value here. It will not go back to zero because you are applying, for example, if we get uh, this uh, beam, you are applying a load that will stay for all the time. The load will be there. So this is it, Shabab, when we have a ramp input also. 
ramp input is something like this. You just uh, put your, your uh, system, when you have known input, what will be the output? Same thing for the ramp input. We define our equation like this numerator, denominator, and then this is the time, the system transfer function. Now this is your ramp input, and you define LSIM. Here we will use the function LSIM in MATLAB linear simulation, L-S-I-M. You give your, in, your, your system, you give your input, and then the time, and you will get the transfer function. So the, the dotted line is the red line is the input, which is the, uh, which is the ramp, and the blue line is the output. So this is when we use the uh, ramp input. Similarly, when we use this one, we will see all this one, the dotted line, as you can see, if your input is like this, is a ramp, and then it will be a step input after time is equal to one. We apply this one. I will give you this into in details when we study uh, this one in uh, the lab, in the lab. I will stop here and I will take the attendance. If you don't mind, just give me one minute to uh, take the attendance. Who is with us today and who is with not? Who, who is uh, with, who is not with us? Sorry. So I just any questions, Shabab? Do you have any question regarding the topic today? It's just we have seen some mechanical system. We are taking over the input and we are calling it the transfer function. But this is the only thing new. Al-Ilwa Munir Mawjud is here with us. Munir, kif harak? Adigalbi Faisal, Faisal Mawjud Ma'ana Mewd. Adigalbi Faisal. Faisal Mawjud. He's not here today. Yes, the phone. Yes, the phone. Mawjud, the phone. اه اوكي شكرا سلامات امس ما شفتك فيصل خير ان شاء الله المسعودي موجود المسعودي المسعودي كيف حالك ما سمعتك اليوم الحمد لله بخير اخبارك يا دكتور كيف حالك الحمد لله الله يبارك فيك الملاح ماجد ماجد موجود كيف حالك ماجد؟ القحطاني حسين اهلا دكتور شباب ولا واحد تكلم ما سمعت صوتكم ما ادري اذا المحاضره ما المحمدي اليحيى عباس اليحيى اليحيى موجود؟ اليحيى ما هو موجود معنا؟ عبد الكريم موجود عبد اهلين عبد الكريم اهلين الشهري علي الشهري كيف حالك؟ اقول شباب ما سمعت صوتكم اليوم ولا واحد تكلم ما ادري المحاضره مفهومه ولا لا؟ مفهومه يا دكتور ان شاء الله كلير واضحه Just go yes. through it. Go through it. Inshallah, I will. I mean, the Rumeh Hani, Hani, Hani. Where are you? We haven't heard your voice today. We haven't seen you. Well, Allah, thank you so much. Is this the Qasim Daiman or where? Indeed. How is Baris Najd? Najd. The Qarni Ali. Ali, is he with us today? موجود دكتور موجود كيف حالك ان شاء الله بخير تمام اللهم لك الحمد ظهراني فارس موجود معنا فارس موجود اهلين فارس كيف حالك فارس الحمد لله طيب كيف حالك الله يبارك فيك حمدان عبد العزيز الحمدان الحمدان عبد العزيز معك حاضر دكتور اهلين بالحمدان وينك الحمدان الرياض ولا وين موجود والله بس مش موجود معي بالكلاس موجود في الرياض يمكن اه لا في جدة انا دكتور جدة ما شاء الله ايوه يلا الشريدة 
اهلين محمد كيف حالك محمد؟ بخير نعم اخبارك يا دكتور عساك مرتاح الله يبارك الله يبارك فيك العجمي مبارك مبارك موجود وين؟ دكتور موجود اهلا وسهلا كيف حالك مبارك؟ الحمد لله كيف حالك دكتور؟ الله يبارك فيك الطليحي يوسف يوسف ان شاء الله تكون بخير الحمد لله الحمد لله ابشرك يا دكتور شكرا الزاير حسان زاير كيف حالك ان شاء الله معنا بخير كله تمام جوهاني نادر نادر كيف حالك الجوهاني نادر الجوهاني نادر نادر ظهر ما هو موجود اليوم العقيل رائد الاخ هلا هلا والله دكتور موجود اهلا وسهلا كيف حالك رائد الله يسلمك كيف حالك دكتور الله يبارك فيك الدرويش عبد الله درويش موجود معنا؟ حاضر دكتور اهلا وسهلا كيف حالك درويش؟ الحمد لله تمام حسين حسين موجود معنا؟ شرفنا حسين الدبيس علي دبيس الدبيس موجود يا دكتور اهلا يا دبيس كيف حالك دبيس؟ الحمد لله بخير حسنك بخير محمدي سلمان سلمان موجود؟ محمدي سلمان سلمان هو البشر علي البشر علي علي البشر كيف حالك علي؟ جارودي يس هير اهلين جارودي ما سمعنا صوتك اليوم جارودي ماليش كذا لا موجود فاهمين ما عليك يا دكتور الرشودي موجود؟ الرشودي صاحبنا الرشودي وينه؟ محمد الرشودي محمد رشودي مبين وموجود بس ما هو ظاهر معانا راح ينام الهاشم ناصر حاضر دكتور اهلين الهاشم اهلين يا اهلا وسهلا العواد سلطان الشيخ سلطان كيف حالك؟ السوبدي علي السوبدي علي اهلين بالسوبدي علي عبد اللطيف عبد اللطيف اهلين شيخ عبد اللطيف عبد رب النبي موسى اهلين شيخ موسى الزهراني عبد العزيز الزهراني عبد العزيز اهلين بالشيخ عبد العزيز الزهراني العتيبي فهد اهلين بالشيخ فهد كيف حالك يا شيخ فهد محمد عبد الله بخير دكتور محمد يزيد اهلين بالشيخ يزيد كيفك يا شيخ يزيد خباز منتجب الخباز منتجب اهلين بالشيخ منتجب الصبحي نايف اهلين بالشيخ الصبحي نايف مين ما سمع صوته يا شباب او كان ذات نومه او غفوه الرشودي 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 يا الله شباب نشوفكم على خير ان شاء الله tomorrow we have quiz as i mentioned it will be about chapter 3 يعني ممكن حتى we can include chapter 4 لانه ما في شيء بس it will be up to chapter 3 مين ما سمع صوته يا شباب والريبيت اللي ما سمع صوته الجهني نادر نادر الجهني نادر الجهني نادر الجهني موجود بس ما يتكلم ما ادري راحت عليه نوما المحمدي سالم الرشودي محمد الرشودي محمد يلا شباب نشوفكم على خير ان شاء الله بالتوفيق ان شاء الله لا سهل الكويز ما في مشكله سهل الكويز ما هو صعب الرشودي موجود اخر نداء آخر نداء الرشودي موجود
الجهني نادر موجود آخر نداء المحمدي سلمان آخر نداء المحمدي سلمان الرشودي تفضل يا نايف نايف تفضل تفضل نايف يس نايف يس نايف تفضل ايوه هلا دكتور معليش بس بالنسبه السؤال عن الميجر ان شاء الله هل اذا يعني حليت الكوزات الاسئله راح تكون نفس المستوى ولا احتاج اني ارجع اعود اكزام الميجر السابقه؟ لا 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 ارجع بس راجع اللي عندنا وخلاص راجع اللي ركزنا عليه اللي خلاص ركزنا عليه جميل يعني ما احتاج اروح للماجر السمسترات اللي قبل يعني. اب تو اب تو بس ما 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 اعتقد انه لازم. ان شاء الله باذن الله. بالتوفيق ان شاء الله. باذن الله يعطيك العافيه. اوكي شكرا. دكتور 